Welcome back to BGC Dreams. Today I'm standing on the corner of 9th Avenue and Lane S, and this is where the turf football field is located. So it's actually undergoing heavy construction right now. I'm actually not sure what they're gonna transform it into, but at the moment anyway, it's not possible to play football or soccer. In any case, it's been quite some time since I think we actually showed footage of BGC. So it's a nice, chill, relaxing day today. It's a weekend and the sun is out. So we actually just wanted to start filming this way. For today's vlog, I actually wanted to talk about the possibility of selling everything you own and moving to the Philippines. Now this might seem like a very drastic decision, but I think it's one a lot of people start contemplating about and taking a little more seriously after they visited a place like BGC. So lately we've actually been having a lot of conversations and meetups with people and I want to just share some of the insights that I've gathered because I think it might be a little surprising. To get started, I actually want to share a personal story since I think that's something that hits home more than anything else. So recently, my cousin from California visited the Philippines for the very first time. To surprise her, we kind of just picked her up at Naia Airport in Manila and we booked the grab and we started driving into BGC. Naturally, since it's her first time here, I really wanted to closely observe her facial expressions and just kind of see her reactions of you know getting to know the Philippines firsthand. So one thing I noticed when we were driving into BGC is her facial expressions were very muted for the most part. It wasn't like it was anything new or exciting for her because she was kind of born in Vietnam. So more or less for her, Southeast Asia kind of more or less looks the same. And I think the Philippines is no exception to that. So when we got closer to BGC, we're about five minutes out. I was monitoring her facial expressions more closely. And I just won't forget, like, she didn't look very excited because it was like, oh, like, you know, I was expecting you to live in a much grander place. But as soon as we pulled into BGC, like, her eyes kind of, like, opened up and she was like, oh, wow, this is where you live. So whether it's fair or not, I think the truth of the matter, though, is really for a lot of foreigners, when they step into BGC, it's kind of like entering a new world. I'm sure you guys have seen so many vlogs by now where people say, BGC reminds me of Singapore. It's so shiny, modern, and clean, and all that stuff. Well, you know, as much as people like to exaggerate that point, I think there is a lot of truth to it, which is why kind of that analogy got started in the first place, right? So I could see for sure without question, like when my cousin stepped into BGC, it's like this very immersive experience where you're like, wow, I'm like so blown away, shocked, and impressed. Right. So I think for a lot of foreigners anyway, that impression has a lasting impact. And this is what's prompting more and more people to consider moving to the Philippines. Now, I think we could probably sit here all day and debate whether BGC is good for the country or not. I know there's a lot of people who really don't like the city because they feel it's very plastic and fake and it's not fully representative of the greater Philippines. But at BGC Dreams, our perspective has always been like, you want a city like this because it kind of sets the Philippines apart and it modernizes it and in a way it puts it on this new tier, this new rung, this new pedestal where like anything is possible. And I think a great first step, of course, is convincing people from the outside that it's a wonderful place to not only invest in but to live in. And I think those impressions, at least, you know, for myself, obviously, and for my cousin as well, it's getting more ingrained in your head. And actually that brings up to the next story we have, which is we've been meeting a lot of people from California lately. And even last night we were talking to two people from California and you know, it was kind of like their first time in BGC and it's already like mind blown and people sometimes get very um, eager and excited. So like for a lot of people from outside the Philippines, they are already thinking, how do I invest in this area? Cause I just see so much massive potential. So BGC is just one example of a planned city community, but I think it kind of pioneers the way for future developments to take place. And when you have something so proven, you know, tested, and people love it so much that when you start building new projects outside BGC, like for example, in Arca South, and now even outside NCR, like in Bulacan, they want to do a Northwind Global City. You know, projects like that, I think, you know, it resonates more with people because they have like this definitive proof that these type of, you know, planned communities, these townships or estates, they really can work and they can prosper and thrive. And, you know, for a lot of investors, they're actually extremely happy with the 
returns and the appreciation that they've made on their, the property that they've purchased. So I think all this, of course, is very healthy for the country because you're bringing in so much more you know, capital from outside that wants to invest in this area. Of course, naturally, I think that opens up more jobs and opportunities for the locals here as well. So if a modern city like BGC, no question, you have all the infrastructure in place. You have all the malls, restaurants, hospitals, international schools, and you know, nowadays blazing fast internet. So there's really no restrictions and people who visit here like quickly realize I could kind of have the best of all worlds. And of course, if you are not from the Philippines and you're in a place like the States, you get a sticker shock, but usually in a good way, like, oh, I can't believe prices are this affordable. And last night we actually had a great conversation about how the Philippines is a perfect strategic hub to connect you to the rest of Asia, right? So a lot of people from the States, you know, especially if you've been living there for a very long time, you've kind of seen all the nearby geography and places. So for a lot of people, it's very refreshing to be in Asia because there's just so many countries here and they're so drastically different from each other. For example, if you go to Japan and then you go to Korea, to Thailand and to Vietnam, I mean, they're all Asian countries and they're located in close proximity, but the cultures can vary greatly. And, you know, not only the food, the languages, but, you know, just I think the experience overall. So a lot of people are looking for that. And, you know, they look at BGC as this very strategic location as a home base to the rest of Asia. If you have all the infrastructure in place and the price, you know, to purchase property here is relatively affordable for these people, they, you know, I think a lot of people like to get their feet wet. They might buy like one unit here, kind of test out the waters. That's kind of like what I did for myself. But then I think as you get more and more immersed and sucked into, you know, the Philippines, you know, a lot of people, the foreigners, they always say the same thing. Like, I'm so much less stressed when I'm in the Philippines. I'm so much happier. I'm smiling more. You know, I don't like kind of worry about a lot of the, um, you know, the, the issues and the problems and, and the struggle from the states. And they start to kind of realize that stuff is like inconsequential. It's just like nitpicking and squabbling over nothing. So, yeah, I guess that brings up to the big question then, like, you know, would you sell everything and then just kind of give up that lifestyle entirely and then just move to the Philippines, make it your permanent home and then just kind of like uh, start a new chapter in your life? Of course, it's a very big decision, one you need to spend a lot of time thinking about to make sure that this is actually what you want. I do know, again, of course, we've talked to a lot of people, if you have uh, roots in the Philippines, whether you have family members here or you were actually born here and you left the country, you know, for a good number of years and you want to return, that, of course, I think is a more natural, seamless transition to make. It's less nerve wracking, um, you know, but even then a lot of people say like it was a very scary decision. For myself, I think it's another additional data point for you guys because I don't, you know, have Filipino blood. I, I'm not um, from here. My family's not from here. but. Even for myself, like I got more and more immersed into the country, the people, the culture, and I wanted to make it a more permanent home base. Um, with that being said, I do know that there are people who kind of take that leap of faith. They sell everything back in the States and they come here, they settle in the Philippines. And, you know, in many cases, they invest even more heavily into the country. They buy more and more um, condo units or, you know, lots and you know, whether they build a house on it or they just kind of land bank it for future appreciation. You know, that's something that I see is very common. And also even like buying up a lot and developing it into like commercial spaces, right? So there's like many ways to invest in the Philippines. I think land is one that's very um, noteworthy and, you know, of great interest to people because this country, for a lot of people who like are really like tuned in, they know that it's rapidly, you know, developing and at a very accelerated rate. Um, you know, I really don't know anyone who's disappointed with the price appreciation of like pretty much everything in the Philippines, like whether it's a condo unit or, you know, uh, a, you know, a piece of parcel of land that you purchased like years ago. Many cases, um, you know, the real estate has doubled or tripled on a like global scale relative basis. That's very like you know, astounding. That's like spectacular returns. So there's no guarantees what the future holds, but I think that is um, a strong temptation for a lot of people. And, um, 
you know, from the data points we've gathered anyway, people have been very pleased with the uh, return on investment, you know, for the most part. For myself, though, I'll say my own personal strategy was only to invest what I could afford to lose entirely in the Philippines. So I think what I mean by that is even though I fell in love with the country and, you know, I purchased a few condos here, like I never decided for myself anyway to go like completely all in. I can't say, you know, someday later I won't make that big move. But for now, anyway, I'm taking more of a slow and steady approach. And I think if you have any reservations or doubt, you know, that's kind of a more prudent course of action. For myself, my own strategy was always kind of to hold like between 70 or 80 percent of my assets in the States. So, you know, I'm a U.S. citizen again. And, you know, I, I purchased two condos in the Philippines. But even if like tomorrow I had to wake up and I lost everything for whatever reason, you know, I got shipped out of the country, I had to go back home. I had always been comfortable enough with the possibility of that reality that I still said it's worth kind of the risk to take because that's how invested I've become in the country. But nevertheless, you know, you always have to think like worst case scenario. And for a lot of foreigners, I think it's like, what if I lose everything and my gamble fails, right? And I have to go back to my home country. For myself, it was, you know, nobody wants that to happen, of course, but it was the acceptance. Like, if that were to happen, I would be okay with it. Like, it would suck, but I would find a way to pick up the pieces and kind of like find a way to carry on with my life, knowing, you know, in advance that most of my assets are still, you know, domiciled in, you know, the United States. So that strategy and that approach and those numbers might not be applicable for everyone, but that's just my own data point. But in terms of, uh, you know, someday later, perhaps, you know, taking a more aggressive approach, like a lot of the people that we meet who say like, you know, I'm just so done with the states. I'm tired of all the hate crimes. I'm tired of being scared. Like, I don't even want to go out at night and, you know, just like, the way the states has, I guess, progressed in recent years. A lot of people are not as proud of that. And they think it's like, you know, in some cases it's kind of embarrassing, like, you know, that stigma that's being more attached to the states and kind of all the stuff that's happening there. I think those people are, have been much more keen to just pack up their bags and say, I'm done with this. Like, I don't want to partake in this type of lifestyle anymore. I just want to go somewhere much more peaceful and just have that peace of mind. So. I don't know, like, you know, I try to be an open book for the most part. I don't want to close the door on anything, but I'd say where I am today is kind of like where I've been since I started, which is like, okay, you can like dabble and speculate on the Philippines. And I think like, if anything, over the years, my conviction has actually increased more and more. Because when I first started, I had much more trepidation, but in terms of actually like putting your money where your mouth is, like I've still try to maintain more of that 70 to 80%, 20% split. And, um, you know, so far so good, we'll see where things go. But, you know, if we could find, like Jenny and myself, find ways to make more money in the Philippines, um, I think it would be more and more realistic to kind of just, you know, double on down and, um, you know, be more aggressive and invest more in the country. Because I think the future prospects are as bright as anywhere else in the world, or maybe even brighter, so. Yeah, just my two cents for today. And that's all for this episode of BGC Dreams. We really hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please remember to give us a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel below. It's now time for lunch. So thank you for listening to the yap. And again, I really hope you enjoyed it. Till the next vlog, ingat po kayo.